Now then, so as I push this on through, you can see that as the laser would de depict a whiter color or brighter color uh, from gray to black, as the color gets darker, obviously the firings of the laser gets more closely packed or denser until we get to a situation where it is white, completely white, which means the exact opposite that this would be black. And you can see that the, the actual laser, you can detect the actual laser beam here as it cuts off and you can just about detect that the scan lines of the laser that it's cut are butt, butted up against each other so it gives full coverage. This is 0 0.9 of a millimeter step over. Sorry, oh, it's not, it's, it's 0 0.09. Um, so now here we go to 0 0.1 and you can see that there is not much let me turn this around a bit so that I can get it underneath the microscope there's not that much difference between this one which is uh, 0 0.09 and the next one over if I can get to it there we go which is 0 0.1 there's not that much detectable difference even if you go further out you can, really can't there's no real difference to us, to our eye, that we can see that, you know, there's not much difference at all. Um, this particular one is, if I can get it under, I can't get it under any further than that, I don't think. Oh, if I turn it sideways, I can. Okay. This is 0 0.15. Now you can actually detect that there is a very, very, very small, tiny gap. Uh, incidentally, I will tell you that each one of these scan lines of the laser is about the size of a human hair. So this is, a, the, you know, the, the size we're, we're, we're looking at here. Uh, so the gap in between is what, a tenth of a human hair? In actual fact, I should put my finger here on what we're looking at. We're actually looking at that and you, it's impossible to detect uh, any lines in between. But you can see that there is a difference between this and this. So let's just move on to the next one. And what we're paying attention here to is the scan lines and the gaps between, you know, the laser rather lines and the, the, the step over. Now it's quite defined uh, that there is a definite gap now between the scan lines. And this is 0.25 and 0.3. I'm just going to get the gratitude cool a minute. That is the um, little device that tells you exactly or gives you an indication of size. First of all, I've got this um, little it's a six inch roll. Okay, it's got graduations on here. It's um, 
32, uh, 16th of an inch and 64th of an inch and also the millimeters. So we're, we're, I'm going to show you a, a comparison now. Okay, so Okay, so if you can see a 64th of an inch, okay, each one of those divisions is a 64th of an inch, so you're familiar with that. Each one of these divisions is a millimeter. And this is half millimeters. Oh, if I can hold it steadily enough. So each one of these the small divisions is a half millimeter. And from here to here is one millimeter. So, and it's still too big to actually understand. Come, to understand how small these are, as it were. Okay, here's a definite comparison here. I've lost where I am. There I am, somewhere. Here we go. Okay. What we're trying to do here is gauge the size of our laser. And there it is there. So the size of our laser track then is 0 0.076 or as close to it as we can can be. And the step over is uh, the step over is nearly the same there. So I don't, I'm not really sure how that comes about, but there it is. Let's have a little look, 0 0.1, or oh, 0 0.1 closer. That looks to be closer to me. Hard to make the comparison. No, I think actually, there we go. Now 0 0.76 is probably the nearest. It's, it's less than 0 0.01. Oh, sorry, 0 0.1. I believe so. Anyway, it's so minute that it's not really worth splitting hairs about. Um, so that's the, the level that we're working down to. And why I'm showing you this is because this step over and the size of the laser, laser track then or burn mark, becomes very important. Now, I am going to move now to the, the next one, which was our test card, which is what you can sort of pick out easier the different levels of, of should we say, changing color. So, this is white. This would be regarded as white. I think those little marks are just pieces of dust and what have you that are floating around the workshop here. Uh, this is what the laser cut. This is the first square. And we're going now to the second square. And you can see there's a, a defined line of from one shade to the next shade of color. 
push that card underneath, it's probably easier to see. As we move to the next shade of colour. So what we're, we are determining here is there is the laser can work at a minute level uh, right down to 0.1 of a millimeter. The step over can be defined just at 0.1 of a millimeter. This, this one here. This is back at 0.1 of a millimeter where you can just make out that the, 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 the track marks or the cut marks of the laser are just touching each other. They melt into each other, but they don't, um, shall we say, interfere with each other as, as much. So this is the highest resolution that we could uh, etch into uh, a piece of material. And um, obviously then as you go out to 0.3, then it gets a bit too coarse. You can actually detect that. And in real life, you can, you can feel it and you can just see it with your naked eye. So what we are determining here is that between 0.09 and point 0.1 is probably the ideal um, situation for etching and also 3D engraving. In acrylic, that is. Um, it may t turn out to be the same in um, wood as well. This, by the way, is the viewing if I can get it a little crisper than that, I'll try. It's about as crisp as I can get it. Now this is viewing the laser cut at 0 0.09 step over. This is viewing from the top of the cut. This is with the actual surface that the laser cut. Now I'm going to just turn it over and show you an interesting something. Looks a bit fuzzy. Look at that. It's much more defined. And that is why when you etch into a piece of acrylic plastic and turn it around the other way, it looks so much sharper and better. You can see that the, the this is now the reverse side. This is the shiny side and the etching has been carried out on the other side. And it's much more clearer because you're actually seeing or viewing the bottom of the cut. Okay I've just taken this into maximum uh, magnification. Uh, this is now at 500 times magnification. Let me just see if I can, that's it. That's the absolute largest that I can I can get it. That is now 500. Uh, times magnification. It's a bit snowy because I suppose that's the interaction between the, the microscope and the, um, the the operation of the, the screen of the display here. But um, that gives a very graphic, I think, understanding of what the laser is actually doing. And this is this is travelling at 300 millimeters per second. Um, fantastic view there.
Okay, so I think we'll draw this uh, video to an end um, now because uh, it's going to start to get a little, little bit too long. Um, next time we come back, uh, I think we'll we'll do our first attempt at a a three-dimensional uh, cut. I think it'd be fair to uh, do a separate video for that altogether. So, so long as we get a an understanding of the step over and the power settings of the, the laser and when you alter step over the actual results that you get and it's easier to uh, split the videos up like this uh, it's easier for you guys to um, to watch things and I suppose understand them a bit better so I hope you've enjoyed the video Please come and today. see me on both of my channels, on Australian Inventors Workshop and Australian Inventors Laser Lab. So, until next time, thank you for watching and bye for now.